Welcome to the second TechIt tutorial I am doing and this one is going to be building a lot off the first one and we are going to be building some basic automated machinery um, to really help start and advance your TechIt 2 world. So the first machine we will look at is a automatic geothermal generator farm or geothermal generator power setup I guess it's not really a farm and what it does basically is pretty simple it takes these lava cells and just gives it to these geothermal generators so that you never have to do it manually pretty straightforward and then the second machine which I'm actually using this power to uh, power is this e automatic EMC farm I've made a few variations of this farm on my uh, Tech It 2 playthrough series. This is actually a slight adjustment on the most recent one I just made, but this one is a little simpler and it is actually a little more efficient as well. So obviously this is the one I've learned a lot from and this is the one I will show you how to make from scratch. But we will start with the geothermal generator setup because a lot of people struggle with it and uh, that's partly my bad because all my setups use thermal generators and if you just use normal geothermal generators which are these guys it doesn't work I'm not sure why but it just simply doesn't work so I will get the uh, exact items I need just to replicate this and then we will build that together Alright, so inside this chest we have everything we need to make a thermal generator setup. You'll need an energy condenser. It can be um, just a normal one. This one's Mark II, but uh, just a normal one works as well. You'll need a routed interface pipe for the energy condenser. You'll need a broadcaster chip for the interface pipe. And then you'll need lava cells to put in the energy condenser and as well to put in the stock keeper chips. So the thermal generators are optional how many you want. So I did nine. If you need a ton of power you can do you know 64. If you don't need that much power you can do one if you wanted. But uh, I'm just doing nine and then however many thermal generators you want you'll need a routed interface pipe for each one as well as an item stock keeper chip and glass fiber cables or HV cables or copper cable whatever cable you want to use just to go on top and connect them all at the end and then here if you want it to be fully automated as in you never have to refill the energy condenser you uh, can place some energy collectors around the energy condenser or if you're not rich uh, I just have this stack of diamonds, I mean that would mean you're rich, but any type of EMC just to throw in here if you want to manually fill up the lava cells instead of having it automatically fill. So let's take all these items and let's uh, just build it pretty simply. So you place the energy condenser, the interface pipe, the broadcaster chip is not configured yet either is the stock keeper chip so for the broadcaster chip in this case all you have to do is right click on it and leave everything at default you don't have to change anything um, for the stock keeper chip you will right click on it and what you'll do is say refill infinitely and uh, request a stack of lava cells so now you can place your thermal generators on top of the uh, interface pipes. Actually, that's not quite going to work because you have to place one stock keeper chip in each one. So let me do that here. All right, now they're all good. And the last thing we have to do is place a lava cell in here. So this energy condenser is making lava cells. And you can see it's not doing anything now. And if you place the collectors 
all around it, you can see it automatically makes them for you. These collectors uh, just use the sunlight or any light source to make EMC. Or if you don't want to wait for this or uh, want to feed it yourself, you can just put EMC in the side, any EMC, and it'll fill it with lava cells. So now you can see the lava cells going into each one. They will all be at 64. And anytime one is used up, it'll go and send just one from this chest. And then last, you just connect them all to a source of power, or they are the source of power, but you connect them all to some form of transporting the power. And that's it. There is your thermal generator setup. Uh, they're all turned off now because I'm not using the power for anything. But it's pretty basic and it's pretty useful early game. I used it in a lot of my uh, buildings. Just gives you a steady supply of power. Um, and you don't have to worry about putting coal in generators or anything like that. So now I will do the same thing and show how to make the automatic EMC farm. All right, so same as last time, everything we need to build a automatic EMC farm is here. You'll need two energy condensers. I highly recommend at least one of these being Mark II, um, because if you use two Mark I energy condensers, once it fills up with blaze powder, it will not have anywhere to place the blaze rods, and the machine will shut down. You'll need three routed interface pipes, two item transport pipes, a item responder chip, an overflow responder chip, a broadcaster chip, and then a stack of blaze rods and a stack of blaze powder. And then once again, the bottom row here is optional, so however big you want it to be, to, you know, between 1 and 25. If it's bigger than 25, I've noticed that amount of entities in one, you know, pipe can cause some lag. So if you want more than 25, I recommend making two EMC farms instead of just one big one. So in this case, I just have nine. And then you'll need a interface pipe for each, an extractor chip for each, a stock keeper chip for each, and then nine, f you know, these can be copper cables or HV cables. I just like glass fiber cable because it's uh, easy to make. And then that is what you will need for the bottom. So we'll start on the bottom and work our way up. We'll need the blaze powder and uh, might as well take it all. I just have some dirt here because I'm in survival, so if I need to pillar. So we'll place our power on the bottom. We'll place our mace raiders on top. And then we will place our interface pipes on top of those. So for the stock keeper chip, these are not configured yet. I didn't configure any of them, just so you guys could see exactly how it's done. You'll right click on the stock keeper chip. The match options do not matter. The stock will be 64 blaze rods, fill infinitely, and then you can place those nine, one in each. The extractor chip will be whitelist blaze powder. And then orientation has to be either north, east, south, or west because uh, these rotary macerators cannot be pulled, items cannot be pulled from the top of them. So in this case, I will just choose east. I always choose east, it just, you know, works for me. And now these can be placed in. Nine. All right, now you will place a item transport pipe on both sides. And then an interface pipe on both of those. And then an energy condenser in between. So on the right side here, you will have a broadcaster chip. Right click on that. Everything is fine as default in this chip. Put that there. On the left side here, I will do a uh, item responder chip. 
and in this case it will be whitelisted blaze powder once again and then the priority does not matter so just make sure you whitelist blaze powder it is by default whitelist but you just have to put the blaze powder in there right click it there and then lastly let's keep my pillar going here you'll need an interface pipe on top of whatever one has the responder chip inside of it it doesn't actually matter but it just looks better this way it can go on this side as well if you need it to place our energy condenser down and then in this interface pipe you will place a overflow responder chip which has nothing really to uh, configure so just leave it as is and place that there so now all you have to do is place a blaze rod there and then add some EMC here I actually don't have any EMC on me so let me just get some diamond blocks all right so throw that in there and hopefully yep there it goes it will distribute one stack to each of the macerators and the way rotary macerators work is they start at 0% speed and as long as they're constantly working on something they will build all the way up to 100% and go super fast so I will let this just sit here until it's at 100% and then I will uh, show you guys how it looks at the end alright finally our rotary macerators are at full speed they're all at 100% and you can see this is how it works any available space in this chest um, for blaze powder will get filled and then turned into blaze rods and the blaze rods will be pulled out on this side and go down and fill the macerators macerators will turn it back into um, blaze powder and you will get more EMC from the blaze powder than you uh, will use from macerating one blaze rod and then any extra EMC from this blaze powder can just go in this top chest here and you can obviously turn it into anything you'd like let me just grab another energy condenser just to show so you'll collect it with a high EMC item uh, up in the top chest and that's basically all there is to it it's pretty fast obviously you can do this up to uh, any size but I recommend stopping at uh, 5 by 5 and uh, yeah that's all there is to it this uh, gets requested a lot how exactly do I build this um, in each video I use these pipes and chips that's always asked so hopefully that helps you guys and clears some of that up thanks for watching um, we are up to 36 subscribers now I believe 36 subscribers so thanks a lot guys thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one